Hey, welcome back. My name is Sushant Sudhish and I am your trainer for this DP900 Azure Fundamental Certification course. We are starting a brand new lesson today. In the first lesson, we are going to explore core data concepts. So let's look at the learning objectives for this episode. We will start with how to identify how data is defined and stored. And we will identify what are the characteristics of relational and non-relational data. We will describe and differentiate different types of data workloads. And we will try to describe and distinguish batch and streaming data as well. So without wasting any more time, let's get into it. So what is data? Data is a collection of facts such as numbers, descriptions, and observations used in decision making. You can classify data as structured, semi-structured, or unstructured. Structured data is typically tabular data that is represented by rows and columns in a database. Databases that hold tables in this form is called relational databases. The mathematical term relation refers to an organized set of data held as a table. Each row in a table has the same set of columns. This image illustrates an example showing two tables in an e-commerce database. The first table contains the details of customers for an organization and the second holds information about products that the organization sells. Now let's understand what is semi-structured data. A semi-structured data is information that doesn't reside in a relational database, but still has some structure to it. Examples include documents held in JavaScript object notation or JSON format. This example shows a document representing customer information. In both these cases, each customer documents include child document containing the name and address. But the fields in these child documents vary between customers. So what is the third kind? The third kind is unstructured data. Not all data is structured or even semi-structured. For example, audio and video files and binary data files might not have a specific structure. They are referred as unstructured data. There are other types of semi-structured data as well. These examples include key value stores and graph databases. A key value store is similar to a relational table, except that each row can have any number of columns. And the second type is graph databases. You can use a graph database to store and query information about complex relationships. A graph contains nodes, which is information about objects and edges, which is information about the relationship between objects. This image shows an example of how you might structure the data in a graph database. Data processing solutions often fall into one of two broad categories. It's either analytical systems and transaction processing systems. So what is Transactional system. A transactional system is often what most people consider the primary function of business computing. A transactional system records transactions. A transaction could be financial, such as a movement of money between account in a banking system, or it might be part of retail system, such as tracking payments for goods and services from customers. Think of a transaction as a small, discrete unit of work. And transactional systems are often high volume, sometimes handling many million transactions in a single day. The data being processed has to be accessible very quickly. The work performed by the transactional system is often referred to as Online Transactional Processing or OLTP. To support fast processing, the data in a transactional system is often divided into small pieces. For example, if you are using a relational system, each table involved in a transaction 
only contains the columns necessary to perform the transactional task. And normalization can enable a transactional system to cache much of the information required to perform transaction in memory and speed throughput. Now let's understand what is analytical system. In contrast to system designed to support OLTP, an analytical system is designed to support business users who need to query data and gain a big picture view of the information held in a database. Analytical systems are concerned with capturing raw data and using it to generate insights. An organization can use these insights to make business decisions. For example, detailed insight for a manufacturing company might indicate trends enabling them to determine which product lines to focus on for profitability. And most analytical data systems need to perform similar tasks like data injection, data transformation, data querying, and data visualization. This is an example image which illustrates the components in a typical data processing system. Let's look at these four components one by one. So what is data injection? Data injection is the process of capturing the raw data. This data could be taken from control devices, measuring environmental information such as temperature and pressure, or point of sale devices recording the items purchased by a customer in a supermarket, or financial data recording the movement of the money between bank accounts, or weather data from weather stations. Some of this data might come from a separate OLTP system as well. To process and analyze this data, you must first store the data in a repository of some sort. The repository could be a file store, a document database, or even a relational database. And you can keep the data in Azure SQL database or any other storage platform, which we are going to mention in the later videos. The next step is data processing. The raw data might not be in a format that is suitable for query. The data might contain anomalies that should be filtered out or it may require transforming in some way. So after the data is ingested into the data repository, you may want to do some cleaning operations and remove any questionable or invalid data. And finally, data visualization. Data represented in tables such as rows and columns or documents aren't always intuitive. Visualizing the data can be often be useful as a tool for examining data. You can generate charts such as bar charts, line charts, plot results, or geographical maps, pie charts, or illustrate how data changes over time. Microsoft offers visualization tools like Power BI to provide rich graphical representation of your data. Let's understand the difference between batch and streaming data. Data processing is simply the conversion of raw data to meaningful information through a process. Depending on how the data is ingested in your system, you could process each data as it arrives, or buffer the raw data and process it in groups. Processing as it arrives is called streaming, and buffering and processing the data in groups is called batch processing. Let's understand streaming and batch processing in detail. In batch processing, Newly arriving data elements are collected into a group. The whole group is then processed at a future time as a batch. Exactly when each group is processed can be determined in the number of ways. For example, you can process data based on scheduled time interval. Or it could be triggered when a certain amount of data has arrived. Or as a result of some other event. An example of batch processing is the way that credit card companies handle billing. The customer doesn't receive a bill for each separate credit card purchase, but one monthly bill for all that month's purchase. So let's look at some of the advantages of batch processing. Large volumes of data can be processed at a convenient time. Another advantage is it can be scheduled to run at a time when computers or system might otherwise be idle, 
such as overnight or during off peak hours some of the disadvantages of batch processing are the time delay between ingesting the data and getting the results all right so now let's understand the streaming data in stream processing each new piece of data is processed when it arrives for example data injection is inherently a streaming process and streaming handles data in real time unlike batch processing there is no waiting until the next batch processing interval and data is processed as individual pieces rather than being processed a batch at a time streaming data processing is beneficial in more scenarios where new dynamic data is generated on a continual basis so what are the examples of streaming data so one example could be a financial information tracks changes in the stock market in real time another example could be an online gaming company collects real time data about player game interactions and the third example could be a real estate website that tracks a subset of data from customers mobile devices and makes real time property recommendations for properties to visit based on their geolocation apart from the way in which batch processing and streaming processing handle data there are other differences as well so let's look at that one by one the first one is data scope batch data can process all the data in the data set stream processing typically only has access to the most recent data received or within a rolling time window the last 30 seconds for example the next difference is about data size batch data is suitable for handling large data set efficiently and stream processing is intended for individual records or micro batches consist of few records and the third difference is the performance the latency for batch processing is typically a few hours stream processing typically occurs immediately with latency in the order of seconds or milliseconds latency is the time taken for the data to be received and processed and the last difference is analysis you typically use batch processing for performing complex analytics stream processing is used for simple response functions aggregates or calculations such as rolling averages So that concludes our episode 2. In the next video, we're going to explore roles and responsibilities in the world of data. So I will see you in the next video. Till then, take care.